Hello, welcome to Yates Makes. Something a little different today. I wanted to share with you some of my painting techniques. So I'm going to be using this example to talk you through how I might start a painting. And then I'm going to actually use this video as motivation to finish this painting, which has been hanging around for ages and show you how once I've done my initial stencil work, I then paint in using more traditional um, brush techniques. Okay, let's have a look at how I might go about starting a piece. So how do I start? Well, usually on a canvas or a board using a flat colour as a kind of base. So here I am painting out an old canvas. This one has got some nice collage texture already on it, which will add a bit of surface. Now, while this acrylic paint is drying, you can see I've frozen the shot there. I'm flicking a little bit of water, which will act as a resist. And when I rub it off, you'll see I'm left with this kind of mottled texture. Okay, so here is how I start a lot of paintings. Now, this technique is worth adding, works particularly well for the sort of paintings I like doing, which often involve kind of linear structure. Um, so again, oh, excuse my dogs walking all over the painting there. Um, you know, I've been working on this theme of roller coasters, um, particularly and wooden trestle bridges and things like that. So great for um, straight lines. So I cut those um, strips of masking tape into thinner strips, break it down, and then I literally just draw with the tape, which is so satisfying. Um, they curve round bends, they can do corners, you can kind of um, stamp down the blade onto the bit of tape where you want to cut it and just kind of ping it up. Um, I find it really versatile and actually surprisingly quick to work with. Um, there you go, there's me jamming the blade on, ping up that bit of tape at the point where you want to cut it and um, yeah, just, just really, really fast. Um, so there you go, I mean it's fairly self-explanatory, right? Um, I'm just moving around the board. The best thing about this is, of course, it's masking tape. If you're not quite happy with where you put a line, um, you just peel it up and stick it down again. Um, it's so impermanent that, again, that adds some versatility um, to this stage of the process. There you do. There you see me just going around a bend. Um, okay, so um, I won't show the whole process here. Um, let's move on to the next stage. So the next stage is essentially a stencil technique because my next step is to get spray paint spray over this then peel up the tape what you just saw me do then was flicking a bit of water down as a resist to the oil based spray paint um, then I'm going to rub the surface hopefully just peel up and create a little extra texture you know this is just going to be the first in a long series of layers I'm going to add to this this is very much my base or my starting point. So there I am, doing the fun bit, adding my spray paint, and generally excited about where this is gonna go next. All right, so I've done my spraying, and I think I left this a little long. Um, normally when I wipe here with a rag, um, more paint comes off where that water has resisted it, but I just think I let the water dry a bit too long. Um, as you rub, that's gonna start peeling up some of the tape, give you something to grab hold of, um, so you can just peel the rest of this off really quick and reveal your image and kind of hey press though You've got your starting point um, You could just leave it there I guess but um, of course, you know, I love layers so for me It's just a starting point to start enjoying um, Some more painting techniques once I've peeled all of this stuff off that the next stage is to go straight in with some sandpaper I'm sanding that bottom corner there um, just to make that a bit fainter then I've got another layer going down now which is just a thin wash of acrylic paint dripped down and yeah as I said before excited to see where this could go next okay I'm just going to show you the finishing stages of another example this picture which like the last one started life as a masking tape drawing all of that roller coaster structure in the top half started as masking tape you know the bottom half of this painting presented a, a really interesting challenge because i was inventing imagining it using the top half as a guide to kind of visualize that reflection i had a lot of fun yeah it presented a lot of difficulties but it certainly was a lot of fun right let's have a look 
how I got on with some of the processes. Okay, you can see I'm, I'm a fair way through this painting, but I've got to a kind of standstill um, with this reflection. And You know, sometimes in painting or with your artwork, you just need to do something drastic to kind of force yourself into re-evaluating and readdressing an area. So here's me doing something quite drastic and just scraping on some patches of colour um, to give me uh, almost like starting from scratch blank canvas to build up this area again kind of forcing the issue on myself um, most of this gets painted out and, and just becomes layers that peek through underneath um, but it did the trick um, felt a bit stressful doing it but it certainly did the trick and helped me refocus so there's my first tip don't be afraid to take a risk right while that was drying I just went up and I'm, tr I'm trying to kind of like build some depth and um, prominence to this area in the kind of in the uh, on the right hand side of the structure of the roller coaster now you know I had a reference picture to draw this out in masking tape but it was very kind of block black and white had no light reference no color reference so you know this is a really interesting exercise in kind of stretching my imagination if you like and my kind of visual memory you know it's worth adding here i wasn't after total realism i was just after some atmosphere and playing around really with how i feel light might fall on objects um okay there you go i'll speed along through the next section before we deal with um the how i finished up the reflection but yeah this is a lot of fine brush work quite opaque paint and just kind of delicate colour mixing really. Okay, let's have a look at how I kind of tackled the, the reflection, which as I've said before, presented a bit more of a challenge because I had no reference at all to go by. So here, um, if I just zoom in a little bit, you'll see that I'm painting in the negative space really. Um, so with some darker areas into those reflections to try and bring the brighter, lighter colours forward. Um, working very generally, a bit more water in the mix, um, keeping everything quite blotchy and loose. Measure where you can, so I'm just taking some reference points up from the structure that's above the water, just to give me a little guide for where these reflections might fall. Um, again, working in layers, letting things dry, um, chopping between the darks and the lights to try and build up a little depth. Now, here was my next drastic move. Um, I kind of almost regretted this as I was doing it, but I really wanted some textural variety in this reflection, so I thought drips would work really well. Um, once you start, you kind of got to keep going, so mixing wet colours into wet colours to get drips running into drips. Um, most of this, you know, when when it dries, I'm going to be painting back into, again, using the roller coaster structure that's above the waterline to kind of reflect down into. But yeah, I mean, I regretted it at the time, but I needed to take a risk, like I say, to push myself forward. And as soon as it was dry, um, it went a bit more transparent and, you know, I was off again using me um, spirit level there just to lean on to get a bit of stability and putting in some more of these highlights. All right, very much on the home straight now. Um, you know, as with a lot of big scale, quite detailed paintings where you're relying on imagination, you're going to lose your way, refine your direction, lose your way again, probably multiple times, as I did plenty with this painting. Um, but, you know, as you get nearer the finish line, um, you get that sense of satisfaction as well. So now I'm just working in, again, contrast to these reflections, some darker areas, some lighter areas, um, trying to get a bit of the reflected structure back into that section so it's not quite such a kind of mess of colour. Um, yeah, the last few paint marks now. Some brighter colours over the top, just kind of bring everything together a bit.
All right, there you go. This is where I got to in the end. You know, I'm still not sure it's finished. I think I'll probably just hang it on the wall, live with it a bit, probably notice a few things, but try to stop endlessly fiddling with the thing and just move on in my life. But, you know, fantastic, really enjoyable challenge. Okay, there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope uh, that in covering some painting techniques, I might have inspired some of you to, to pick up some of these things or maybe incorporate them into your kind of existing painting work. Um, and I've been posting a lot about printmaking, jelly plate printing. Um, so this is something a bit different. Um, I'm definitely going back to the security of my, um, the kind of playful security of my gel plate now. Um, as I said in the video a couple of times, you know, a large scale painting is a bit of a wrestle, it's a bit of a struggle, but ultimately um, a really a lovely challenge and um, yeah well there you go um, hope to see you soon in another video remember subscribe like comment share all of that and I'll see you soon Ta -da.